Good day. My name is Dave Glover. Today I'll be walking you through the RSA Event Source Integrator Beta 3. The Beta 3 version offers some exciting changes and enhancements, such as periodic saving of the working XML file, cloning of headers and message definitions. Parsers can be exported as live resources, which makes it much easier to deploy to multiple decoders simultaneously. Loading of custom table map file. This allows you to define your own meta keys prior to working within the ESI tool. And then we've offered some changes in the colors of variables and headers. Let's take a look at building a parser using the new Beta 3 tool. Before building any parser, we need to extract the data out of NetWitness. The way we do that is we go into Investigator, we find our device type of unknown. Now in this case you can see there's about 19 log files that are undefined. We have our device IP address. From here we go to Save Events, Logs, type in a friendly log file name. In our case we're going to be building a parser for a Cario control firewall. So I'll save this as Cario. This will then get saved as Cario.log. At this point, the file has been extracted, and we can go here, click View, and then click Download, and at that point, it will have downloaded the files that we need to build the parser with. Let's go on in to the ESI tool and build a parser for this device. When launching the ESI tool, we're greeted with a splash page that allows us to do one of two things. We can go ahead and create a new parser, or open an existing parser. In this case, I will be creating a new parser, and then in a follow-on video, I'll show how we open an existing parser and modify it. Let's start by clicking Create New Parser. There's some information that we need to go and fill in. Let's start. This device type will be a Cario Control Firewall, so use Cario for short. You notice as I typed in the device name, device display name pre-filled out as well. We'll just leave that as it is. The device class will mark as a firewall. You can see the different options that I have here, all the way from antivirus to VPNs to Windows to application servers and so forth. Pick the appropriate classification that you'd like to use. Again, we're going to go ahead and pick firewall. The device location, this is where the parser is going to be stored. As far as the log file, here is where I can tell it where the log file is located, or I can leave this blank go into the actual parser creation and drop that log file in. Let's go ahead and pick the log file location. Once I click on the folder button, I can then navigate to exactly where my log file is located. Double click on that. Once the ESI tool has loaded the log file that we picked, let's take a look at what we see here on the screen. We're greeted by the header message and parser details up at the top. We see the log file location in this log data piece. And then down below we actually see the 20 log messages or 20 individual log messages that were imported into the ESI tool from the log file that we exported from NetWitness. If we take a look at the top pieces here or the top of the bottom section, we see all events 20. That 20 is indicative of the number of log files that are loaded into the ESI tool. We see that all 20 of them are undefined as would be expected since we haven't built the parser yet. We can see that we have zero headers defined and zero completely defined. Again, completely expected as we haven't built the parser yet. Let's start. First thing we want to do is we need to select what we'd like to use as the message ID. The message ID is a unique value for a specific log format. If we take a look down here at what we have, for the 20 messages, we see that most of these are exactly the same. They all start allow all, host name, IP address port, host name, IP address port. Now there are a couple of these messages that are in a little bit of a different format. We see here allow all, host name, parentheses, IP, colon port. Now here we don't have a host name. It's just a straight IP port. It's a little bit of a different layout 
By looking at this, I know I'm going to need at least two different message definitions. Also, when walking through and working with the ESI tool, you may not know what variables you would like to use. There is IntelliSense, so as you start typing, it will show you the variables that are available. But there's also a reference here that we can take a look at to see what variables are available to be used. If we click on View, Variables, we can see all of the different variables that can be used in the system. Things like org destination, or object server, or node name. If there are values that you would like to use that are not in the list, you can upload them using your custom table map file. If you go to File, Import Table Map, that can then bring in the additional variables that you have defined or meta keys that you have defined within your own NetWitness system. Once you do that, those new meta keys will be available within the ESI tool. Let's get started. In this case, I would like to use allow as a message ID. Message IDs, there's no hard set rule for what you'd like to use as a message ID. In looking at this, there are, for me, two different message IDs that I could have picked. Allow being one, and result code of 200 being another. By choosing allow, I only need to define what's before the message ID as placeholders. If I were to pick 200 as a message ID, then I would need to define the majority of the message as placeholders, and then do a payload rewind to feed the rest of this message into the actual parser. And I'll show you a little bit more what I mean here in just a moment. I'm going to select allow, and I'm going to go create header. What happens when I do that is that entire log message moves up top and is split with the message ID being purple in the beginning. And now we need to define everything over on the left as placeholders to get me to the message ID. And then everything after the message ID, at least in this case, is going to be a payload. Let's do that first. If I right click here, I can set the entire log message post the message ID as the payload. And now we just need to work with the beginnings. In working with headers, you want as much fixed text as possible. However, you need to make allowances for items that are going to change. For example, this one is constant throughout all of these log messages. So I could leave the one as a piece of fixed text. For the date time, clearly that will change for every log message. In that case, I can do a couple of different things. I can right click, create variable, and what I'd like to call that using the variables tab to know what variables are available, I can call that age time or header time. Again, it's kind of just a placeholder. The next thing that I need to account for are these two pieces, control and carryo control. As I'm familiar with the firewall, and know what messages it will send out, I know that the control is present in every single message. It's a piece of fixed text. However, the carryo control will be changed whether it's a AV event or something along those lines. So I need to account for the fact that the carryo control may change. I will right click, create variable, and list this off as H object. What you define these two in the header is completely up to you. They don't need to be parsed values in NetWitness. You could in some cases, but not always. A lot of times the headers are just placeholders to get me to the message ID. If we wanted to start at this H object, I could do a right click here and do payload rewind. What that means is that the entire message starting at carryo control will be passed into the parsing engine. We now have our header completed. Our header contains a bunch of fixed text, this one, the control, and these three dashes. We're ready to go ahead and define the actual message. The create message is now lit up. 
because the header is complete. By clicking Create Message, it moves everything after the message ID up into the partial line. This is where I was saying that the payload section is what gets moved up. If we had picked Karyo Control using the payload rewind, we would have seen Karyo Control dash 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 allow moved up to the top. Begin. The allow all is going to be a rule name. If I do Control K, which is a keyboard shortcut for the right click create variable, I can type in rule name. Now you'll notice as I start to type, we have the IntelliSense picking up the variable names. Pick rule name. For the host name, I will go ahead and I will call that s host or source host. Source address. Source port. Destination host. Destination address. Destination port. Let's quickly walk through the rest of these. Result code 200. The HTTPS I will pull off as protocol. Now this firewall does web classifications, so I'll call that category. In this case, the dash web pages is a piece of fixed text. So I will then go ahead and pick graph.facebook.com as my URL. If we take a look at the bottom, we can then see that we have one message that is completely parsed and we can see the variables that the values are going to be parsed into. From here we want to pick an event category. This would be content web traffic successful. And now we're done with this message. If we move on to the next one, let me go ahead and get that done and I'll show you the results. I have now defined the messages or the parser message for the second message in the list. What I found was as soon as I com completed that parser line, it parsed out 18 more messages. Now I have 19 that are completely defined and I only have one left that I need to finish. If we take a look at the message ID section, we see an allow and an allow colon 01. The reason for that is there's variances of the allow message. If we go ahead and click on headers defined, we'll see that I do have one last message that needs to be completed. This is noted by the orange little LED sign here. The greens show me all messages that are parsed completely. This one shows that the header matches, but I have yet to define the message. If there were any reds, it would show me that the headers that I have do not work for the messages that are listed with the red icons. Let's go ahead now and finish up this last message and I'll show you how to export this parser and get it into NetWitness. I have now finished defining the three different messages or message variations within this log file. We have allow, allow01, and allow02. When building the parsers, you want the most verbose definitions highest. Whereas if I created a very, very generic parser definition for the allows, the generic needs to be down towards the bottom, the most verbose up at the top. If I need to reorder the way that these are listed in the parser, I can simply right click and move up or move down. I can do this within the group of allow, allow01, allow02. The parser is now complete for the log files that I've been given. What I need to do now is I need to save the parser and then export it so that we can load it into NetWitness. Let's go ahead and save. Keep in mind that periodic saves has been happening about every 30 seconds as I've been working on this parser. If something happened to your uh, laptop or computer where it crashed, the work that you had 
put into this parser would not have been lost, at least up until the 30 seconds before the crash. This becomes very handy when you're building parsers that have multiple tens and 20 message definitions or more. We've gone ahead and saved this parser. So now we have two different options to pick. We can either export parser or export resource. If we export parser, it will save it as a .envision file, which then can be loaded into NetWitness in the large decoder, and I'll show you how to do that. The other option you have is export resource. When you export resource, that then can be loaded into live and deployed on multiple large decoders at the same time. Now that I've got this saved, let's go ahead and actually upload this into NetWitness. I now have my NetWitness services screen open onto the log decoder. From here, we'll go to System, Config, Parsers, Upload, we'll click Plus, We'll go ahead and select the Cario.Envision file and click Upload. Once it's done uploading, you will then go into Explore, Decoder, do a right click on Parsers, Properties, click Reload, and then click Send. You will see the parsers have been reloaded. The alternative way to get the parsers to reload is by clicking stop capture and shut down service. At that point, the service will then restart in 15, 20 seconds. I prefer the Explorer parser reload as it doesn't stop capture and you won't lose events. The other way to get these loaded in is to go to Live, Search, Package, Deploy, click Browse, pick the zip file, not the Envision in this case, but the zip file, click Next. We'll see that that shows up as Cario RSA Log Device. Click Next. And I will be able to pick the log decoders that I would like to deploy it to. In the case of deploying live resources like this, there is no need to restart or reload the parsers as that is part of the live service functions. To recap, the RSA Event Source Integrator Beta 3 provides a couple of new features and functionality. Periodic saving of working with XML files. Cloning of headers and message definitions. Parsers can be exported as live resource in addition to the standard export loading of custom table map files, and color changes of variables. Thank you for your time.